Interior Danchu, and I'm managing the development team of the Jasper Reports IO product at Tipco. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a distributed version control system such as Git to create and manage your repository for Jasper Reports IO. For the purpose of this video, I have created a sample repository with a few reports connecting to a database, and we're going to preview them using JasperSoft Studio. Later on, we're going to deploy these reports onto a production server and see what modifications are needed to make them work there. I have JasperSoft Studio on my machine and I'm using this project called JRIO Demo Report to store the reports I have created for this video. It contains several reports that connect to a database in a Postgres server that runs on my local machine. We can see one of these reports and try to preview it. If we look at the properties at the report level, we can see that this report connects to the Foodmark data adapter in the data subfolder of the repository. This data adapter is here and if I open it with the specialized editor, I can see it provides information for connecting to a Postgres database, which runs on my machine on port 5432, and we're connecting to the Foodmart database with username and password. Let's see how this report looks like in preview mode. Okay, we're, we're using the Jasper Reports IO specialized preview that JasperSoft Studio offers. We can see that all these reports in this project are being uh, managed through a, a Git repository which we cloned locally and we're currently on the master branch of this repository. Let's see how the repository looks like on the Git server. I'm using a Git server hosted on the corporate network. And the Git project has the same name, GRIO Demo Repo. We can see it has a fairly short history with only a couple of commits when I uploaded these sample reports. There's only one branch in this repository, the master branch and we'll get back to it later. So I have this Git repository cloned locally, and I'm using JasperSoft Studio to create and modify the reports, which I then commit back to the Git repository. This helps me collaborate with other developers which might modify the same JRXML files, and the conflicts are managed through Git, as it should be the case. Let's try to deploy these reports onto a production server. My production server is a Linux machine, which I'm connecting to right now. On this machine, I have Jasper Reports IO already installed and started. It's, it's started on port 8080 and it's available. We can see it running already. Let, let's take a look at some of the reports that are shipped with uh, Jasper Reports IO by default. These sample reports use an internal database that is found in the zip distribution itself, so they are self-contained. They, they run um, right, right away without the need for extra dependencies. But this particular instance of GRIO has been modified to pick up an extra repository found in the GRIO demo repo on the desktop. This is a local clone of the same Git repository I just showed you earlier. If I go to the terminal window, I can see I'm on the master branch of this repository that I cloned here. And I can verify I have the latest version of this Git repository. 
it tells me I'm up to date. If we look at the contents of the folder, we can see these reports that we, we've, uh, we've seen in, in Studio. In reports, in particular the customer report GRXML, customer overview report that we preview with Studio. So I have the latest copy of these reports cloned from the same Git repository that I committed from within Studio. Just one more thing be before trying out these reports. This additional repository was configured in my instance of GRIO by modifying a configuration file inside the GRIO web application, inside the web in folder, there is this configuration file called application context repository. If I open it with a text editor, I see that in addition to the default repository found in the zip itself, in the distribution of this just reports IO itself, an additional repository, which is of a simple file system repository which points to home Theodore desktop GIO demo repo repository, the folder that I just showed you moments ago. Let's see if I can execute view that customer overview report. I'm pretty sure I'll have an exception and we'll see what error that is and why do we get it. The report was found inside demo reports and its name was customer overview. Hit enter. And I get this error. The report is present on my local installation of Jasper Reports IO, just as I demonstrated through configuration. But it cannot connect to a Postgres database which is supposed to run on local host port 5432. Well, it's obvious because I don't have any Postgres database on this production server. I would need the report to connect to a remote Postgres database and I would need to specify that Postgres database with its public IP. So I would be inclined to go to the repository and simply modify the Foodmark JDBC XML file to change the IP address of the Postgres data adapter. But I won't do that. Actually, I will return to my development machine and I will modify the IP address there. Let's see how. I'm returning to my development machine where I have my repository. And here, again, we can see the, the address of the Postgres database inside the data adapter file. And I would have to replace localhost with the IP address of the machine. But if I do that and I commit my change on the master branch where the other developers are working on the same reports, I would interfere with their work because they are probably used to having the Postgres database on their local machines. So everybody would prefer to preview the reports using their local, uh, their respective local Postgres instances. If I put the public IP address here, everybody would run their uh, reports in development mode against the production database. And we don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to make this change on a branch of my Git repository. Let's create this branch first. Going to command line, I'm inside my project. I can see there's only the master branch, but let's create a new branch called release. And let's switch to that release branch that we just created. the git branch command confirms I'm now on the release branch. And this can be seen also in Studio. If we refresh the project, it says we're currently on the release branch of our git repository. I'm now ready to modify the IP address of my data adapter. And I know it's 10.0.5.80. I'm saving the file. And I'm 
now ready to commit my modification to the release branch. Studio indicates I modify this file. Let's put a comment. Modified data database IP address. Committing and pushing. Studio is asking me when I want to push my local branch to the Git server. And I'm going to do just that. We can verify that my modification has arrived on the corporate Git server. If we use the web interface again, refresh the information for the project, we can see it has two branches now. And if we go to the release branch, we can see that the last commit was the one I just made with the modified IP address for, for the database. So I have my modification already committed to Git. Let's pick it up from our production server where Jasper Reports IO is running. I'm returning to the Linux machine running Jasper Reports IO. And I'm going to the command line. And this time, I'm not going to use the master branch anymore. Instead, I'm checking out the release branch. It brought me one file which was modified, the foodmar JDBC XML. So now, with, with this modified file where the IP address is correct, I should refresh the browser window and see the report working correctly. It does. So imagine having hundreds and hundreds of reports connecting to the same database and going from development to production is about modifying only the data adapter file to point to the location of the production database, which should be queried by these reports. Let's try another thing to illustrate the benefits of using branches. If I go back to development mode and switch to the master branch where I'm supposed to work as a report developer. Let's make a modification of the customer overview report. Let's modify the back color of this text field. We'll pick a, sh a, shade, of sh a shade of yellow making sure the um, text field is opaque, not transparent. Saving the report and previewing it. When I preview it within Studio, I confirm the text field is now yellow. So let me now commit my change to the Git so that my, my co-workers see my modification. Modified text field caller. Commit and push in one go. Now, the modification was made on the master branch. Let's say the developers, like me, work days and days or for weeks on these reports. And at some point, they reach the deadline. And the version they have on master need to be published on the production server. How would they do that? Well, I take my, you know, um, production server admin hat 
and I'm going to take the master branch and merge it into the release branch and update the production server. I'm going to do this in, com in command line. Here, again, just to confirm I'm on the release branch, I'm checking out, uh, sorry, I'm on, the, I'm on the master branch, I'm checking out the release branch. Indeed, I'm now on the release branch. Let's merge the modification from the master branch. Hit merge master. Okay, accepting the comment. Okay, I can see that in the release in my in the release branch on my local clone here, I have the latest commit. So let's push this branch now. Okay, let's confirm this with the web UI as well. You can see the release branch contains the modified text field color. So the only thing I need to do now is to go to the server and pull the latest. Yes, I'm on the release branch, so let's get the latest. There's one file change, it's coming in. Let's refresh the report in production and we see the yellow text field. So what we've seen in this video, we've seen that it is very useful to use a distributed version control system such as Git to manage the Jasper Reports IO repository it will help you collaborate with your co-workers, developing the same reports, working on the same files, managing conflicts and all that. And it will also help you deploy reports into production once the development stage has finished and you have a final version of the reports. You can cut that out into a separate branch and get it into production.